Hey, I'm Rachel. And I'm Nick. And behind us is our 2011 retired ambulance that we have converted into our own tiny home on wheels. We're currently here in El Centro, California, about to cross the border to Mexico. And we did a few upgrades to the van before we came down here from Canada. So we figured we would give you an updated tour before we head south for the winter. We have been living out of this ambulance for over two years now. And some things have changed since we first built it. So we want to take you through an updated tour of our van and also talk about the things that we still really love about it, the things that we have already changed the things we wish we had done differently and basically all the pros and cons of our ambulance build so that if you're considering building a van or tiny home of your own that you learn from our mistakes. As you can tell, this is a retired ambulance. It is a Chevy 3500 front end with a V8 engine. It came with 337,000 kilometers on it and we installed 630 watts of solar on the roof. So let me show you the inside. If you're familiar with van tours, then you would know that this is a pretty standard build that we have. We have a two person seat here, single seat over on this side, and a fixed bed, which fits a double mattress. If you watched our first van tour, you would know that a fixed bed is what we wanted to go with. And we're still really happy with that. We've met a lot of van lifers on the road now that have like pull out beds or Murphy beds, things like that. And we're just really glad that our bed is just there for us to go lay down whenever we need it. So under this double seat here is our closet and it does look a little bit different after two years on the road. Um, so this is it after we've done all our laundry. Um, it's pretty jam packed, but um, again, after two years on the road, like this is just kind of what we've gotten used to. We've accumulated a little bit more, um, but it's all stuff that we wear all the time. So over on this side, um, you can't see, but there's two bins uh, with my clothes on this side, two bins with Rachel's clothes. And then in the middle is like our shared kind of section. It's definitely busy, it's a little bit messy, but hey, it is what it is. I do have to say about the closet that if we were to do it again, I would want more hanging storage. I see since being on the road for the past couple of years, we've definitely seen people with crazy closet setups and I'd like to just have a little bit more hanging storage. Over on this other side here, we have a single seat, which when we were building our van, we thought the seat was gonna be more so my seat, just because I'm smaller than Nick and it's a smaller seat. I just think it's perfect. I love that there's a little countertop here. And I don't know, I just find it to be a really comfy, Rachel size seat. And it actually has turned out to be exactly that way. We have had people ask us like, oh, do you actually use your tiny one person seat? And I'm like, yeah, I use this seat all the time. This is still my favorite seat in the house because without pulling out a table or anything, I do have the countertop here. And we did this little kind of like L shape around the electrical cabinet in our kitchen area. Below the seat is our dry food pantry, which is really full with like, vegan ranch right now because we're going down to Mexico literally tomorrow morning um, and we wanted to stock up but yeah we typically keep our dry food under here and then whatever overflows in these baskets here um, when we first built our van we didn't have those baskets on the walls and everything was underneath uh, this seat right here including our spices that was a huge mistake I would always tell people whatever kitchen storage you think you're gonna need especially if you cook a lot or eat a lot like we do um, just double it make sure that you have more these mason jars have been here since we built our van out we thought they'd be a good idea and they ended up being a great idea um, we did go with plastic mason jars they still have yet to crack anything which i have heard horror stories about glass mason jars so if you're considering doing the mason jar idea up for plastic uh, the only thing that's really changed over two years is the stuff that we keep in it but we're always rotating out uh, what our most essential things are that we keep in the mason jars as well like i said earlier our pantry before we kept all of our spices underneath that seat and it was kind of annoying if i was sitting there or if nick was sitting there and one of us had to get under to get spices so i think it was about a year in that we added this spice rack which we absolutely love nick made it from scratch as he did everything in the van again if you like to cook make space for your food storage and actually make it really feel like a kitchen in a regular home because after adding like a few components like that this van really really started to feel like home we added a little space up here for extra storage when we first built the van uh, it took us a long time to find baskets that actually fit in there so we haven't changed them out this is something that we've kept the same over here we have like our general storage so if you have like a junk drawer or whatever like at home in your kitchen that's kind of what we consider this it's just like miscellaneous items over here we've got hats toques beanies if you're american 
Over here, we've got my socks, my underwear. Over here, we've got Rachel's socks, Rachel's underwear. Over on this side where we can't quite fit a bin, um, <clears throat> again, it's just for like extra kind of miscellaneous stuff. We try not to stick too much stuff there, but Rachel will maybe keep like her hairbrush or toothpaste or something there. Just below our miscellaneous kind of section here, we have a couple of hooks, uh, one for myself, one for Rachel, and that's just where we keep like any rain jackets, um, sweaters, anything that we just kind of want to like get off our bodies and hang, especially if they're wet. Below that, we've also got our shoe rack, which again, has a space for myself, a space for Rachel, and then just like a little space on top. So I feel like we were kind of ahead of the curve with the shoe rack. Like we had watched a lot of van tours, especially van tours of people who had been living in their vans for a few years when we were building out our van. And the shoe rack was actually an afterthought, but I'm so, so happy that we thought of it last minute and added it because it's always full and it's been so helpful for us. Something that we added way later and like is only in our more recent van life videos, like from the past six months is actually um, this, which is, uh, again, I guess like a shoe hanging storage uh, closet organizer thing from Walmart, but we just kind of cut it in half and this is where we keep a lot of our sauces. And before anyone says anything, yeah, I know that like some of these sauces are supposed to be refrigerated. Our fridge gets really, really full really fast, so we prioritize what we want to refrigerate and what we don't want to refrigerate. We noticed that with our chest style fridge that it just got really full with like salad dressings, sauce and that kind of stuff before we could even like add any produce on top. It's kind of hard to get around that with van life because unless you have a full size fridge, which most people don't, um, you're going to run into some problems of having to prioritize what food you're keeping with you all the time. And so that would bring us next to our kitchen and our fridge. Um, so this is our fridge here, as you can see, it's very full. It always is. Um, we're two people that really love to cook and really love to eat. I don't really have any regrets about this fridge. Um, the handle has broken off, but it's still mostly fine. It doesn't draw like a crazy amount of power. And it was one of the cheapest options online when we were looking for a fridge. Um, we didn't have any preference of what we were gonna go with. And I'm really happy that we went with this one. More of our kitchen area here. This is our plumbing system here. It's completely manual, nothing is electric. So we have a foot pump at the bottom, which when we press on, it pushes out room temperature water through this copper faucet that Nick also handmade. Uh, and when I say room temperature, I mean it because sometimes we have been in really, really cold temperatures and sometimes we've been in really, really hot temperatures. And either way, the water is whatever temperature that is. So it kind of sucks to not have a water heater, but we also like that it's completely manual and doesn't draw any power um, from our electrical. The one really big regret that we have is to not have a bigger water system. We only have a five gallon freshwater tank and then a five gallon gray water tank. So um, we only really have five gallons of fresh water in the van with us at all times. We do have a backup jerry can that's underneath our bed, but yeah, we go through five gallons of water and what, like, few days three days three to five days three to five days so um, we're constantly filling up at like Walmart or basically anywhere that has a water uh, refill station the pro of having a water jug like this as opposed to like a big tank that you're filling up with a hose underneath your van or something is that we can actually just carry these jerry cans in our shopping carts to go fill up at yeah Walmart sprouts a lot of big grocery stores have water refill stations that we can just shove these under and fill up five gallons so yeah, there's pros and cons to it. We're really used to it now, but I think that we would um, adjust that if we were to do another build. Nothing really has changed in our electrical cabinet besides I added a subwoofer. So this here is our amplifier, but besides that, everything has stayed the same. The only thing that we would change about the ambulance now is we would add lithium batteries instead of the two deep cycle AGM batteries that we have. This was our biggest mistake, especially when we installed the induction stove. Um, we didn't understand how much better uh, the lithium batteries were than deep cycle AGM batteries. And anyone who's familiar with our van at all would know that this part is coming. Um, we do have an induction stove here that does not work when we're off grid, which is all the time. I think that we highly underestimated 
Well, we, we made a couple mistakes when we were building the van. Number one, we thought that we were going to have more power than we did. Um, we didn't really understand sizing an electrical system. We tried our very best, um, but we did make some mistakes. So we bought an induction stove with that we do not have enough power to run unless we're plugged into shoreline power. We also heavily overestimated how many times that we'd be on shoreline power. We're like, oh, we'll buy a spot in our RV park once in a while. Like we never, ever, ever stay at RV parks. We probably have, what, three times maybe in the past two years. Um, so this does not get used. I think that we're kind of on the fence of whether we want to upgrade this to gas or whether we want to upgrade our battery bank to lithium instead of AGM. This control panel here came with the ambulance. So we have different switches for different uh, light bars in here, which is kind of cool. And then it's all on a dimmer as well, which is a really great feature. And we didn't have to wire that ourselves. It came with the ambulance. And then just right above here is where we keep our dishes. So our plates, forks, knives, everything, and our plastic wine glasses, which are essential in this van. So welcome to the back of our van. Most of the upgrades that we have done in the van uh, are back here and most of them are aesthetic upgrades, but when you're living in a van full time, uh, aesthetic upgrades can make a huge difference to your morale and how much you love being in your van and how much of a good day you're gonna have just like you would in any other home. Yeah, I think that's natural that after two years we wanted to switch up like some of the colors and stuff. Honestly, we haven't done a lot um, in terms of aesthetic upgrades. Uh, we added these tile stickers underneath the, the bed here. It used to be this like faux brick wallpaper, which I wasn't a massive fan of. And to be honest with you, I'm not a massive fan of these tile stickers either. Like we'll, we'll probably upgrade them again. Um, I like them. But we did get new sheets and added just some more artwork on the walls like this map that we got at the vintage market and then just printed out some more photos, added stuff to our wall grid and added like a few more plants back here as well. We get a lot of comments about our van being really dark and people not liking that. It was definitely a choice and something that we that we really wanted to do. Um, we just like the idea of having like everything just be almost black and then having a pop of color. So that's what we decided to do. I know that's not everyone's cup of tea, but that's how we like it. It also hides stains a lot better, which is nice. And it makes it a lot cozier. We're constantly, we're outside at the beach, we're going on hikes, we're drinking wine. Like there's so many <laughs> ways for the van to get messy and dirty. Um, and this way you can't really see it. I think in terms of upgrades, my favorite is just the slightly brighter sheets, the brighter pillows, just like having a bit more color. And I think the number one upgrade for me is one sec. The new LED lights that Rachel installed all the way around, which kind of look like they're like twinkling on the camera. They're not twinkling, <laughs> they're just like a steady light. Although they do actually have a twinkle option. Just makes it that much more cozy and that much nicer to be in. It really makes it feel like a home. Oh, I should also mention too, because I'm sure people are gonna be like, how do you cook um, if your induction stove doesn't work? And I just cook on a gas stove on top of our induction stove. This is the same gas stove from our first van tour over two years ago. And it's the same one that I still use. It's just a single burner gas stove that we cook all of our amazing vegan meals on. And I should mention that we're still working with the same toilet. We got this Dometic Porta Potty for emergencies. It's mostly for emergencies. We haven't had to use it yet but I'm sure we will have to in the future. It has not just been used for emergencies. We use it, especially I use it all the time. Um, I would really recommend that if you're building a van to include a some kind of toilet option in it, whether it be a pee funnel, um, a luggable loo, one of those foldable toilets, or uh, a porta potty or a self composting toilet, I my biggest recommendation is to do something. I think that a lot of van lifers when they get on the road think like, oh, I would never use the bathroom in my van, but after living in it for so long, it just becomes normal. If we were to do it again and we had the funds, we would have definitely gone with the composting toilet. This is something that we did know at the beginning when we were building our van that we would have preferred, um, but we just simply didn't have the cash for it at the time. So while this wouldn't be my first choice for a van life toilet, I'm, I'm really glad that we have something and it is well used. So that is the gist of our van tour and all of the upgrades that we've done. If you have any comments or questions about 
our van or van life in general, um, make sure to let us know in the comment section down below. We built this van on a very small budget. It was about $6,000 Canadian, $4,500 USD. We had absolutely no idea what we were doing when we started uh, van life. We had no idea what we were doing with the build. And yet this has been our home for over two years. So while it's not perfect, it is ours and we love it so much and are still so proud of it. Um, again, if you have any other questions, let us know and thank you for watching this video. Bye. Okay, bye. And see you next week in Mexico. Okay, bye. Bye.